Okay, so today's going to start the last unit of the year. At least hopefully the last unit of the year. Hopefully you're passing and after these next few days, you are done. I mean, done as can be. So without further ado, let's get started. Get this last unit kicked off and be one day closer to being done with geometry. So for the next few days, we're actually going to take a step back, not necessarily look too much at geometry, but we're gonna talk about and lead up to probability. So we're gonna introduce some probability concepts and just kind of let this be an opportunity for you to get your feet wet with probability. So with the, as with anything, we need to start off with some definitions. That way we know what we're dealing with. We can use technical terms here, etc. So the first one, an experiment is a situation that involves chance that leads to results that we call outcomes. An experiment is something as simple as flipping a coin. You don't know what's gonna happen when you flip that coin. It could land heads, it could land tails. You don't know. That's an experiment. An outcome is the result of a single performance or trial of an experiment. So let's say we're flipping a coin a hundred times. The first time you flip it, let's say it lands heads. That single heads right there is an outcome. An event is one or more outcomes of an experiment. So an event is getting two heads in a row. That would be an event. A sample space, which is what we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about today, is the set of all possible outcomes in an experiment. So every single outcome that could happen is included in the sample space. And we can represent these sample spaces different ways. We can use an organized list where you list every single outcome possible. We can use a table or we can use a tree diagram. And it's a, the diagram itself looks exactly like it sounds, a tree. So the main experiments that we're going to look at, at least for now, are called two-stage experiments. So a two-stage experiment Hang on, let me get this written and then I'll talk about them. A two-stage experiment is an experiment with two stages or events. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, two stages or events. So a sink, just a one stage, that's just flipping a coin. Okay, well, it can be heads or tails, done. Two stage would be like flipping two coins. And that's gonna be our first example, actually. We're going to toss a coin twice. And they want us to represent the sample space for this experiment by making an organized list, a table, and a tree diagram. And then we wanna make sure to answer how many different outcomes exist. So let's think about what could happen if I toss a coin two times. If I toss it, I could get, uh, let's see. I could get two heads. That's certainly possible. 
I could get a heads and then get a tails. I could also flip that and get a tails and then a heads. Or I could get two tails. So all we did here is just list out what could happen. We could get heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. So we did the list. Now they want us to do a table. So let's make a table. We're going to do the first toss down the side here. So let's see. We're going to get, we have an option to get heads or tails. This is going to be our first time. So heads or tails. And then we're going to have a second time that we've got to toss the coin. Remember, we're tossing it two times. And what are our options? Heads or tails? So this is the second time that we're tossing the coin. We're going to make a table here. Now for heads, I'm gonna use H. Tails, I'm gonna use T. So at this intersection, that's where we get heads and heads. So we just list what happens. Here we get tail, if I go down, we get tails first and then heads. This will be tails and then heads. Now, over here, I get heads first, and then tails, or then tails and tails. There's our table. And then we have the tree diagram. So what could happen here? We could get on the first toss, we could get heads or we could get tails. Those are the only two things that could happen, heads or tails. Then I'm gonna toss the coin again. I'm gonna toss it another time. I could get heads again or I could get tails. So, and that happens the same, whether I got tails the first time or not. So heads and tails. And then the sample space is where we follow the tree down. So like if I went, I started here, I went down this way, what happened? What happened when I went down that way? I got a heads and then another heads. That's the sample space. Now, what happens if I go down? Let me change colors. What happens if I go, I start here? So it still hit heads, but then this time I curved down. What would that be? Well, I still got heads first, but this time I went tails. So see how I'm doing that? I'm just following the tree. Next one, I hit tails first and then heads. So this will be tails and then heads. And then last one, I did tails and tails. So this last row right here is my sample space. 
It's everything that could possibly happen. When I go, know this, my outcomes in the tables match, those in my list, and those in my tree diagram. The last step, all of them match the same four outcomes. That's because how many outcomes exist? There's four outcomes. That's how you would answer that question. There's four different outcomes that exist. So that's an example of a two-stage experiment. Experiments with more than two stages are called multi-stage. experiments. Multi-stage experiments. So we're going to look at one more experiment that's two-stage and then we'll really start talking about the multi-stage experiments. Okay, so this one, it says a coin is tossed and then a die is rolled. So there's our two things we're doing. We're tossing a coin, that's one, then we're rolling a die, that's two. Represent the sample space for this experiment by making a list, a table, and a diagram. How many different outcomes exist? Okay, well, let's see. What can happen if you toss a coin? Well, you get heads or you get tails. Simple enough. What about if you roll a dice? You can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So what we have to do here is list all those out. So let's say I get a heads. Then what could I roll? I could roll a one with the heads. Get a heads and roll a two. Get a heads and roll a three. Heads and four. Heads and five. Or heads and six. Those could all happen. Or I could get a tails and roll a one, a tails and roll a two, tails and three, tails and four, tails and five, and tails and six. So there's our list. We listed all the options out that we could possibly get through this experiment. Now we want to make a table. Luckily for y'all, I give you a table. We just have to fill in what happens. So at remember the intersections are what happens. So at this first intersection, I got a heads and rolled a one. So we're gonna say H1. If I go down, that means I got the tails and roll the one, so T1. And we just keep filling our table in. And you'll notice that everything you put here will match what we put in the list. There's our table. Remember, you're just 
combining the different outcomes. That's it. And then we have the tree diagram. Now, this tree, I'm going to warn you, it's going to be a little messy. We're about to see why trees aren't as good as our, they're cracked up to be. Yes, they make a good visual, but making them, oof, they can get nasty quick. So let's see that in action. OK, well, what's going to happen first? First, we're going to toss a coin. Then we're going to roll a dice. So let's see. I'm going to. Yeah, I don't even you know. We'll just see how this turns out. We have our outcomes. And I'm going to really spread these out. I'm going to get a heads right here. Tails over here. And then we're, so this is the coin. And then we're going to roll a dice. And we could have six different options. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. See what I mean by eight? it just gets nasty quick. Okay, so there's our coin, there's our die, and then we need to list our sample space. So notice, we did the coin, then the die. So just like how we listed it on the list and the table, we have to know them down here. So this one would be a H1. Then I'm going to drop down lower so I have room to write. This is my H2. This one I'm going to stop short. Go long. Now, if you can line these all up perfect, that'd be better. But I write too big. I can't do that. So I'm having to kind of stagger them just to keep this looking fairly nice and neat. So now I'm moved over to the tails. Okay, so this area down here is our sample space. Okay, so if we look at this, how many different outcomes are possible? You can look at any one of these and just count them up. And you would find that there are 12 outcomes that are possible. Twelve outcomes. I'm going to change my text color up here. Well, so 
I'm just going back, rewriting this, making it look nice. Okay, there we go. Now we're good. Okay, so now let's move on to the back of the notes. Now we're going to learn about something called the fundamental counting principle. Because as you just saw, sometimes, yeah, it's not going to be practical. Most times it won't be practical to draw a tree or draw a table or list stuff like that out. Because as you just saw, we took two simple items. We roll the dice and we toss the coin. But look how nasty, I mean, look how nasty that is. Yet we only did two things. And look how it's like our trees just, ah, too big. It is too big. Okay. I apologize for the dog barking. Okay, sorry about that. I'm not usually in the place with dogs, but today I'm recording from my parents' place and they have a dog. So, anyways, let's look at an, at an example with the fundamental counting principle and let's see what it says. So, simply put, it says that if there are P ways to do one thing, Let's highlight that. There are P ways to do one thing. And then there's Q ways to do another thing. Q ways to do another thing. Then there are P times Q ways to do both things. P times Q ways to do both of those things together. This is way simpler than how we've taught it in the past. In the past, we've kind of gotten bogged down in the notation, but this is the basics of it. If there are P ways to do one thing, Q ways to do another thing, multiply them together and then boom, there's your answer. That's the fundamental counting principle. So let's look at this next example. Let's suppose an outfit consists of a shirt. So here's a shirt. Oh, here's one thing. I'm gonna highlight that one thing in pink. So we're doing a shirt. Then we're gonna get a pair of pants. So I'm gonna do that in blue. Then we're gonna get a pair of shoes. So we've got three things happening here. We gotta pick a shirt, a pair of pants, and a pair of shoes. Each time you get dressed, you must select an outfit for the day. You have 20 shirts. So 20 shirts, 12 pairs of pants, and five pairs of shoes to choose from. And yes, we're keeping this sim simple. I realize you gotta wear socks or you hopefully you wear drawers of some sort. I, I realize that, but we're not counting those. We're just shirt, we're, we're counting the things you can see, okay? The shirt, the pants, and the shoes. We're not counting the underclothes and the undergarments and all, no counting the stuff you can see. So you got 20 shirts, 12 pairs of pants, five pairs of shoes that you can choose from. How many different outfits are possible? Well, to figure out how many are possible, you just multiply that together. So we have 20 shirts, So 
Throw pants. Five sheets. We simply just multiply all these together. 20 times 12 times five. That's all you have to do. And that'll get you 1,200 outfits. Like I said, that's really, that's it. That's all there is to it. You just multiply them all together and then boom, you're done. That's what's nice about the fundamental counting principle. Okay, so Marcos recently started working at the Lufkin Burger Shack. Pick your favorite shack. Mom's, Ray's, uh, Zesty Burger, I don't know, you pick. He st Marco started working at a Lufkin Burger Shack and he asked each customer at the drive-thru questions from a script. He asked them, what size burger would you like? Kids, regular or large? Let's stop there. How many options is that? Kids, regular or large? That's three options, right? Would you like cheese on that? How many options is that? There's two options. Would you like cheese? Uh, well, you could say yes or no. So there's two options. Would you like lettuce and or tomato? Let's think about this one now. What could you say? You could say none. You could say just lettuce. You could say just tomato. Or you could say you want lettuce and tomato. So how many options are that? Or how many options do we have in that case? One, two, three, four options. Would you, what would you like to drink? Water, soda, sweet tea, regular tea, or lemonade? So if we look at that, that looks like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. But do we have to get a drink? If you go to a restaurant, do you have to get a drink? No. So it's not listed, so we could say, or oh, no drink. You may not want a drink. So how many options does that give us? That's six options. So I kind of left the question out here, but the question would be how many different ways could a customer order? How many different orders could there possibly be? Well, you just multiply these together. Three times two times four times six. That's all there is to it. And this will get you 144 different orders. That he could possibly have. So that one you had to think a little bit, mainly on the, just the way the questions were worded. 144 different orders.
Okay, next example. A die is rolled five times. So a single die is rolled five times. Find the total number of possible outcomes for this task. Now clearly, you probably don't want to sit there and make a tree or a table. You couldn't make a table. It'd have to be five, five dimensions. Oof, I don't want to do that. You could, yeah, you could make a list, but you're going to be writing a long time. So, we want to find the total number of possible outcomes from this task. Well, let's do this. Let's draw five blanks. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is going to be our first roll. So first roll, how many options could I have from rolling the dice one time? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Six options. Okay, I roll it, I get a three. I'm gonna pick it up and roll again. So I'm rolling a dice again. How many options do I have to choose from the second time? six. I didn't change the dice. I just picked it up and rolled again. So I have six options. What about the third time? Six again. Six for the fourth time, six for the fifth time. So to get the total, we use the fundamental counting principle and just multiply all these together. So six times six times six times six times six is really the same as saying six to the fifth, which is, hang on, hang on, give me a second. I gotta calculate this one. I can't do this one in my head, sorry. Seven thousand. 776 outcomes. Go ahead, make a list. We'll see who finishes faster. We'll see who finishes faster. I'm gonna multiply, you make the list. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. So this is the importance of the fundamental counting principle. It makes things a whole lot easier, a whole lot more manageable. Okay, next example. Let's consider a list of four numbers. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? How many unique four digit numbers can be made from this list of numbers. It doesn't tell us anything as far as whether or not we can repeat. So if it doesn't say, we assume we can repeat, meaning we can have a two, 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 because we're doing four digit numbers. We could have a four, 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 these are all valid options because it doesn't tell us they're not. If it told us they're not, then they would be bad, but it doesn't say that. So let's see. This four digits right here tells me I need to draw four blanks. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now for my first digit, how many options do I have? Look in your list here and count. How many different numbers do you have? So 
to pick from. You have four different numbers. So that means we have four different options to go in this first blank. Can I repeat? Well, it doesn't tell me I can't, so I'm gonna say I can. So how many different options do I have for the second blank then? Four. The third blank, four. The fourth blank, four. All, all our blanks are filled. We do just like we did in the problem above. Just multiply all these fours together. So it's gonna be four to the fourth power, which is, let's see, 256 numbers. Unique numbers. That's our answer. And the last example for the notes. Consider the list of numbers, two, four, six, and eight. Hey, they're the same digits, notice. Two, four, six, eight. How many unique four digit numbers can be made from the list? Okay, four digits. So draw four blanks. There's four digits here. I'm going to draw four blanks. One, two, three, four. How many can we make where we cannot repeat a number? We cannot repeat. Meaning once a two is in my number, I can never use that two again. So let's say I'm drawing a number. How many options do I have for the first one? Two, four, six, or eight, okay. There are four options. I'm gonna put these in green. There's four options, right? So I just randomly pick, oh, let's say I want it to start with a four. No, let's not do that. Let's do a six. I want it to start with a six. So, I can choose for this first one between two, four, six, or eight, right? I pick a six. It is now eliminated. I only have to pick two, four, or eight next. I cannot pick a six again. So how many options remain? One, two, three options. Okay. So, oh, I don't know, let's say I pick a four next. So my number I'm creating is gonna be six, four. That four is forever gone now. I'm just left with a two or an eight. So how many options are that? How many options do I have? Two options. Okay, I'm gonna go with a two that I'm picking. Now that two is forever gone. I cannot pick it again. Wait, okay, yeah, yeah, never mind. So all I'm left with now is an eight I can pick from. How many options do I have? One option. I have to pick the eight. It's the only one left. So my number would be six, Four, six, four, two, eight, 64, 28. That's the number we created by chance. How many numbers in total can I create like that? Well, multiply your values here. Four times three times two times one. That's gonna be 24 
numbers. That's how many total numbers I can create where no digits repeat. Notice the huge drop. All I did is change the fact that I can't repeat numbers the second time. And look, I went from 256 options to 24 options. Pretty big drop, isn't it? Okay, so the notes are kind of long today, but there's the notes. Stay tuned for the guided practice.